Paintings! NordVPN isn't like the other girls. Hello. Incognito mode video. Hello. Alright, so the schedule for this mini-series goes like this. Schedule? We did the main channel on theatre. Yeah. Then an incognito mode on painting, which wow. is this. Then okay. there's a main channel on wine. Wine? And then an incognito mode on a bunch but of- But why are we going back and forth? Stories around wine. And there's a main channel on things that people wear. Wear? There's a main channel on luxury goods. Luxury? And we round the whole thing Pog. off with two more incognito modes. Wow. And then I go back into cryostasis. <laughs> this first section is on the no. basics of painting. And we were a little bit worried. We're gonna get so many videos, bros. This is gonna be dope. Show it because we we kind of felt like this will split the audience. <gasps> but not because it's political or anything, but no. because it's so basic. Basic. So someone who already knows something. So if you're watching this, you're basic. Something about art would be like, yeah, yeah. of course. Why are you telling me this? But for someone like me, who knows practically? Sometimes you gotta you gotta dumb things down, you know. Zero about art. I found it really interesting, and I thought, where the heck wow. have I been told this before, right? So, first section. Wow. Why? Why are you not on the set? Basics of painting. basics of painting. Action. The R. Paint. The R. The R. Do not put an F in front of that worst mistake I ever made in my life. All right, first, some things that'll make you go, yeah, and, or, okay. oh, right. Yep. So look at this colorful goo. Paint. Nice. Delicious in both the jam oh, and chip form. yeah, okay. But its raw components are just two essential things. What? An undissolving pigment. Pigment? And a medium. All right. Now, pigments are basically just colorful dust, and the medium Makes is sense. the liquidy thing like that oil? the dust hangs out in. Or water. Now, the liquid determines what type of paint you have. Okay. Pigment plus water equals water, water paint. Colors. Pigment oh, water colors. Plus glue water equals glue. acrylics. What? Pigment plus water acrylic. Water glue? Pa I mean, wait, huh? Oil equals oil paint. Okay, that makes sense. So simple. But how do we get acrylics? And pigment plus. Moving on. Now, the pigment does not dissolve into the medium. Pigments plus Instead moving on. Moving on. It's just kind of suspended in it. When the pigment does right. dissolve into a medium, that's a dye. Wow. So that's the basic difference. Now you have to transfer the paint onto the. I'm gonna need like I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna need like someone to pull up MS Paint and like draw that out for me because that was, that was too many t too many different categories. Pigment plus and then here. Okay. But pigment plus water plus water. H O. Pigment plus water. It's gonna be W, we get WP, which is watercolors. And we're checking, watercolors, got it. Pink plus blue equals acrylics. Okay, we have a glue, plus blue, and we have acrylic. I think it's acrylic. G, it's GP, GP is acrylic. Pink plus oil equals oil. That makes sense, oil paint, okay. What color is oil? Oil, oil equals oil paint. Okay, see that doesn't make sense. This is OP, it's overpowered. So simple. And pigment plus, moving on. Now, plus what? Plus, plus my little pony. Moving on. Now, the pigment does not dissolve into the medium. Instead, it's just kind of suspended in it. When the pigment does dissolve into a medium, that's a dye. Dye. So that's the basic difference. Now, you have to transfer the paint onto the canvas. To do that, we need to talk tools. Well, first, you can just use your fingers. Tool. Okay. It was good enough for the cavemen, and it's good enough for your mom. Still works. So it's good enough for us. Then we tried brushes. Now here is Brushes. the anatomy of a brush. You've got the handle, the bristles, the someone, ferrule. Someone really took a someone really took a toothbrush and they started painting with it, and then it, it changed the meta. Rule and the crimp. The what? Now the bristles are the most important. Source secures the ferrule to the handler. Bit. First, we were just using mangled up reeds called fronds. That's but a they stick. Got really good once we started using animal hair. Have a look at some okay. of the animals we use. Just like toothbrushes. Boar. Boar. Taken from the neck or the back of the pig. Pigo. That is the kind of brush that Van Gogh used. And it's still the gold standard for today. Wow. A goat brush. It's good. It's been like f fucking 5,000 years and we do, so it's still the same. But it's not the goat. Lacks some spring. Goat. So it's mostly used for calligraphy. Badger. Badger. Now that's actually Badgers. mostly used for shaving, not painting at all. Oh. Horse, raccoon, and wolf. Also, not great quality. But what's the worst quality of all? You know, 
the gutter oil of the brush world. Well, the worst quality is camel hair. Camels! Brushes, and they're mostly sold as arts and crafts brushes for kids. Dog shit. But the weird thing is, camel hair is so low quality that it's not even used in brushes at all. Camel? Huh? Yes. So called camel. Those are cigarettes. Hair brushes are actually made from cats and rabbits. That's fake! It's not real camel! Rabbits and squirrels. Cute. What the? But that makes people kind of sad. That's so they changed the name to a much less cute animal and also one that's kind of exotic, so you wouldn't question it. Now, what's the best brush of all? We've been lied to. It's all a lie. What is the S tier the of tier. brushes? Those are made from sable. Sable. Oh this, of course. That's a that's that's a rat. It's ten out of ten. Now sable is a type of weasel. These are that's a mongoose. For their fur for clothing. Two for one. It's him. Oh yeah. But when they catch them to make clothes, they actually only want the body for the clothes. That's drippy. Wait, 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 wait. They use the tail? And so they discard the tail altogether. No. But those tails have the best hair for paintbrushes. And so they are snatched up by the brush makers. Now, the Nash hair it. is special because it has an interlocking scales that scales? vastly increase. It's a scaly? They're, they're lizards now? This is the surface area. But it also holds strong in the long term. Firm and bouncy, but also soft. That's it's smooth. It bounces. Somebody, it's <laughs> Somebody what, what, what are you painting with 20 tooth toothbrushes? Come on now. Firm and bouncy, but also soft. It's smooth. It bounces. It moves. Only with Nutresemme Keratin Smooth. Mongoose. And they sell for upwards of $300. Jesus. What? Is a brush. Eh? That's so much. All right, here's a top ten list, sort of maybe Watch Mojo style. Top ten of the most famous paintings, and just a few interesting. Wait, things. wait, wait! Uh, we did tier list, and now we're top tening. That's crazy. It's about them that you may not know. Pop quiz, sports shoe wearer. Look at this painting. What Ooh. does it make you feel? That's worth a lot. That's got to be Millie's at least. <laughs> Too late. That's modern. Or if you answered in time, wrong answer. Happy, sad. I bet those are the only two emotions you even know. Yep. The correct answer is shame because you are huh? embarrassing yourself. You know nothing about the arts. Wow. So it is time to look at the best paintings to ever exist. Darth Vader. And let's begin with the most obscure of them all. Whoever this is. Whoever that is, the Mona Lisa. The Mon Lisa. Ah, uh, the Mona Lisa. Now, I thought it went first name Mona, last name Lisa. Check it out. Okay. But it turns out Mona is it's an a Genshin Impact character. Honorific, meaning madam. So it's Madam Lisa. Now, relatively Madame Lisa. Recently, historians have figured out who she actually is. And they found out that she's married to a Florentine merchant, Francesco del Giacondo. Francesco Giacondo. So that makes her Lisa del Giaconda. Well, and that Giacondo. explains the alternative title of the work. La Gioconda. La Gioconda. Now, the reason she has her arms crossed okay. and is a little bit chubby is because she's pregnant. In fact, wow. you can kind of see that she's wearing a veil. And that particular type So of if you're pregnant, you have to cross your arms? Veil was worn by pregnant women at the time. Her oh, okay. husband commissioned the painting when da Vinci was already well known. Da Vinci. So it would have been very expensive. And that makes it very funny for a couple of reasons. One. It was never handed over to the family. Wow. Instead, Leo left it in his will to his apprentice. Who? And two, because for a couple of hundred years... Andre Salami? Years, ...the prevailing theory was that she was not an aristocratic wife, but instead a prostitute. Sheesh! Her hair being down and her almost absent eyebrows were common traits of working girls at the time. Why don't they have eyebrows? Anyway, Mother plucking eyebrows. Wait, what? Why is this painting so famous? Well, Da Vinci was already pretty famous, and the painting got stolen. This became a very big news story, and her stolen. face suddenly started getting plastered on a whole bunch of newspapers and wanted posters, making her very recognizable. From there, she became the most famous painting, which is why she always looks so smug. Stolen. Starry Night. Vincent Sorry, no. Van Gogh. I know this one. Yeah, I sure hope it does. 
painted while he was in the St. Paul de Musol Asylum. That's here. And it's this was the Mall. view from his bedroom window. His bedroom. Here is the real view a few decades later. He chose not to paint the metal bars. Now, you can see that there are 11 stars in the sky. He painted the bedroom too. Yeah. Supposedly, that's reference to Joseph from the Bible. Joseph, Mama. he had a hard life. The minivan, he had a hard life too. And he hoped that he would be remembered at least once he was gone. Like Joseph. And you know what? It worked out. It worked. Him, because everybody remembers Van Gogh. Yes. And nobody remembers the guys who bullied him. Van Gogh. And called him a ginger. Oh. Also, there's kind of a theory that... Wait, people, people made fun of gingers back then too? He was killed by some kid. Go check out Wendigoon's channel for more information on that one. Ooh. Ah, the birth of Venus. Wow. All right, let me tell you what's happening in this Apotheosis. So. Why is he spitting on her? <laughs> there's this lady, Venus. A she boba. is the goddess of beauty. And she is coming up out of the ocean in a big clam, right? Yeah. Now, the clam is not a metaphor. There's like multiple different like versions, right? There's like different, there's different like birthing stories, right? for her vagina it's that she is the perfect pearl get it she's a clam now these two here are a divine wind they are blowing they're wind those guys are wind they could have just done like a gust of but instead they decided to take a paper people and just... her like a hot spoonful of soup towards the shore okay and she is carried all the way over to the beach and this beach, by the way, is a real place called Paphos. Pa it's in Cyprus. Paphos. Here is what it looks like in real in life. Sippus. Now, when she arrives on the beach, a nymph shows up, which is this lady here, and she has a cloak, and she throws the cloak over Venus. Why the nymph so thick? And she says, you know what? You're very special. One day they're going to name a four-blade razor after you. Arrangement in black and gray number one. Also known as Whistler's Mother, most famous for its appearance in the Mr. Bean movie. I've never seen either of these. Now, when Whistler's Mother originally agreed to be painted, she agreed to be painted standing up, but she had to pose for so long that eventually- You can't do that. You had to stand for, for days, like- She got quite tired and had to sit down. Okay. There you go. Is that why it looks jank? And that became the famous pose. Okay. The Garden of Earthly- That's it? That's the whole story? She was standing, and then she sat down. Famous painting. Delights. All right, this one is probably my favorite because- But why is it famous? It looks like a Where's Waldo, and then the whole thing just goes completely off the rails. So, Mr. Hieronymus. Her that's a name that's gonna make a comeback. He's Her doing all of this Her cool surreal stuff okay. about 500 years ago. Wait, there's, huh? What? Huh, there's a shrimp. So let's start on the left. Here is Adam and Eve, and okay. the pre-incarnation- A boba! This one's not blurred out. ...of Jesus. And they are all hanging out in the Garden of Eden. Okay. And what's going on in the middle bit? That's- that, What the- What? That? Huh? Harder to explain. The best theory is either that this is Eden, huh? if people were allowed back into the garden, or if they had never left in the first place, or if man had not committed original- sin. That's a lot of ass. Sin. But look at the size of that strawberry. Wow. Oh, here he is. Then on the right-hand panel is hell. Or at least a very bad time. This is where Oddlaw would end up. That son of a bitch. Right. Okay. Now, here's Who? the interesting bit. It's not painted on a typical canvas. It's actually a it's sort of three. cabinet thing with three panels called a triptych. A what? And the neat thing is, if you close the doors, more painting. Whoa! Oh, okay, that's kind of cool. That is the earth, and that is the firmament. A the what? A perfect balance between flat earth and globe theory. A Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grange. This thing is pretty big, and here's the real life place. Oh, this was painted with like dots, right? Yes, it was painted after. Although they've beautified it even more with the office building at the back. What you may not know is that it is actually a sequel. First, George it's Surratt painted the left bank, and that's where all the working class sit. You see these guys, they, you know. Damn, those, that sucks, bro. Shit! <laughs> <laughs> they have a bit less money and stuff. Gross! Gross! And then this is the one that you all know, and that is on. Yo, what? Look. <laughs> the right hand bank. 
And all these people are a very bougie sort. That... That's a right angle, bros. ...is Scrappy-Doo. And that... That's a monkey. <laughs> that's a centaur! The last sopper. Super. Okay. So the scene is this. All the disciples are gathered around, and this is the exact <laughs> moment that Jesus declares, Hey, by the way, I know one of you betrayed me. Damn. And this is everyone's shocked <laughs> reaction to the news. Shocked. Except there's one guy who's just pretending to be shocked. Damn. And here is who everyone is. Yo, yo, yo! Why you Yo! Yo, why is Judas darker than the rest of them? I thought this was me. Yo! Turns out, that's John. Very progressive. And that's all of the paintings, and no one has attempted one since. True. End the part. And I wake up. Quickly, flip the Nord logo, Mariana. Spoilers! Flip it the other way, three pyramids. <gasps> Illuminati. <laughs> There's not much time. I got a log into NordVPN, so Go! the corporations can't track me. Marketing companies gang stalking me, listening to me oh, through stop. the walls. We found the death note. <laughs> Wake up again. I don't have much time. The feds are at my door. Open up. I oh, refuse stop. to take my Nord milk pills. Nord milk pills. Again. The demon in the corner of my room wants to access my Nord VPN. It's Jover. I let him, because I can use it on up to six different devices. Thanks, Damn. Ben. I know the corporations are building profiles on me. I go to Facebook, I go to Wikipedia, then suddenly I'm getting ads for feet on my Facebook. Big feet, big foot, big foot. Big foot. On Tuesday, I saw a red car. <gasps> Coincidence? Huge deal on a two year plan plus four bonus months. Four sides to a triangle. Coincidence? Four sides. There's a guy reacting to my life in the corner right now. 30 day money back guarantee. Wait, What's there's a the guy contact? reacting to my video in the corner. Huh? Coincidence? There's a guy reacting to my Yo! My life in the corner right now. Oh. 30 day money back guarantee. What's the goddamn catch? He knows. Time's going faster than usual. And only a limited time to get a great deal on a two year plan. Oh, shit. Up again. He knows. It's the perfect Christmas present. Who are you? Wait a minute. My family died in a suspicious house fire. Skinwalker in my house. Change location. Skinwalker. Different regions have different prices on plane tickets and hotels. What does this have to do with the VPN? I don't know. They Get it. Get it. Conspiracy. I take more microplastics Buy so I can it. see through the ether. Now. Pizza time. But they're too late. I click Hyperborea and I Hyperborea. am untouchable. Woo! If you understood anything that happened in this ad, go to nordvpn.com slash incognito. Now. You'll get a huge deal on a two-year plan, plus four bonus months. That's crazy. Ad over. Wow. All right, so this one is about how to spot a fake painting. I okay. quite like this section, but it kind of got bogged down by all of its technical information, and it went quite long. So, here it is. For the discerning audience, how to spot a fake painting. Pog. <laughs> glug, glug, glug. Milk! Oh, my god. Is that a real Michelangelo? Michelangelo. We're here now. Quick hypothetical lower tax brackets. Okay. If paintings like this one or this one go for literally gajillions of dollars, huh? that's USD. Then USD. what's to stop someone from doing this? Oh. Then this. And then this. Wow. Then this. And then saying it's real when it ain't. You know, faking a painting. It's Turns a real fake. Out, not much at all. In fact, it can be very difficult to tell these fake ass paintings from the ones that keep it real. There's a whole ass art but it's a to real detecting fake. these fakes. And it's become an arms race, where the authenticators find new ways of detecting, and the fakers find new ways to get around their methods. Mm. Technology's advanced. Do you think it's that like, makes it harder to make? It's like it's like ad block. Good food No, you can beat the forensics. So, authentication. authentication. There are three main categories: provenance, connoisseurship, forensic. Let's start in alphabetical. Frenzy. Provenance. Now, provenance follows the history provenance. of the painting, tracking down the previous sellers and the buyers, all the galleries that exhibited it, okay. the hand-to-hand -hand that it was passed through, all the way back to the original painter. Makes sense. However, the older the work, the harder it is, generally, to track the provenance. Because it's old. for example, the most expensive painting ever sold. The Salvatore... 400... $450? 
most expensive painting ever sold, the Salvator Mundi, the final da Vinci, sold in 2017 for $400 million. And it can only be traced back to 1958. Back then, it was sold for £45. Shit. But in the other 500 years of its history, no one knew where this thing was. How do you know it's real? People still dispute whether it's genuine. I think it's a real flim flam. Flim flam. And this is a made up piece of junk. You just slapped it. I think it. it's fake art news. Real in drag. Oh, then it man, ends up in America, in New Orleans. Oh, I see. Providence. I think we've wished this Da Vinci into existence. Here's the lost Leonardo that somebody once mentioned in a book. Provenance has gotten a lot easier over time. You used to have to track down books and read catalogs. That guy was annoying as frick. And stuff, but now it's all online. Control plus F, there it is. Struggling art. So you see, kid, there's nothing online. Nothing. Tell me who you bought this from, you son of a bitch. Where did you get this? Tell me the name of the auction house that sold you it. Connoisseurship. Look at the work. Do you believe what you are seeing? Wow. How does it look? How does it taste? Are these ballpoint pen strokes those of a master artist? Luckily, there are people like Martin Kemp, who, who spend their whole careers focusing on single artists. I've been dealing with Leonardo for, I suppose, about 50 years. They can pick out the fakes. So, for example, when he was looking at La Bella Principessa, he went, Yep, he uses the trois crayon. The, He's a left-handed artist. The, the proportions what? of the head and the face are all correct. Wow. You know what? I'm going to give this a big rubber stamp right there in the middle of the painting. Confirmed. So, for the fakers, they have to have a keen understanding of who they are copying. One of the best fakers, Almir de Hore. So they got to fake it really fake. For example, mastered really good the fake. strokes of artists such as Matisse, Mogdiliani, and Renoir so well that hundreds of museums are currently in possession of his works without even knowing it. Yes, well, That's Michelangelo crazy. was famous for his Congiante painting techniques. Ekmer and I can't Dahani. see any of that here. You're zero for two, kid. You're going down. Forensics. This thing's going straight to the lab. Get scammed. You're about to have a painting. What are they going to do? A carbon date the paintings? Brush up with yeah. the law. Masterpiece. <laughs> More like you're a real yeah. masterpiece. Bro, 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 bro. What, 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 what is it with the forensics? Where it's like every crime scene, they find some cum stains and they DNA track down the criminal. Like, bro. Why are people rubbing it out after a murder and shit like that? Like, it doesn't make any sense. What are they? So, so some of these paintings, they uh, forensic, forensic DNA track that the sperm back to the Leonardo. Fuck <laughs> you. All right, now the people that solve murders have really changed the game when it comes to art forgeries by implementing radiocarbon dating. Oh my god, I, I, I got that. I got carbon it. dating, yeah, carbon. but it's not serious. Carbon. Listen, you're made out of carbon. I'm made out of carbon. Paintings are made out of carbon. Carbon. And when a thing is made out of carbon, there are these unusual isotopes of carbon-14, right? They're floating all throughout the air and the atmosphere. Now, all living things contain a trace of them. Okay. They are taken in when something eats, breathes, anything else. Damn. And that happens dude, that guy was nomin, dude. Continuously throughout He's the He's nomin! However, when the organism dies, it stops taking in new carbon, right? Which means it stops taking in new carbon-14. Same thing happens to a painting. Okay. You've stopped putting paint on the thing, no more carbon. Carbon. Carbon-14 is an unstable isotope, and it decays at a very steady rate. <laughs> Poof. It turns into nitrogen-14 and a beta particle. Beta! Beta! And because these carbon-14 atoms decay at a very steady rate, in principle, you can look at the proportional number of carbon-14 atoms and determine how old something is. More carbon-14, newer painting. Okay, but this only works if painting's really old, right? Less carbon-14, older painting. In 1985, using this technique, they caught a guy, Robert Trotter, who forged a Sarah Hon painting. Ah, far too many carbon-14 atoms. That's crazy. Lock them up, boys. But there are even simpler methods of testing the age of a pigment. 
three Jackson Pollock paintings were found to be fake when it was determined that the- Carbon 14, you can just, uh, just cough on it. Pigments on the canvas weren't sold until the 1960s. But Pollock was dead Pollock. by 1956. Nowadays, there are huge pigment libraries that can be easily cross-referenced. So that shows the year a pigment was first introduced and what year it stopped being used. Holy. For example, anything that has titanium white has to have been produced in the last T 80 titanium years. Titanium white? I'm going to be honest with you, kid. Michelangelo never used the yellow Crayola. X-rays. Now, you can blast this thing with some radiation and look behind the painting to see what's underneath. For example, did the artist do a sketch first? Maybe this is painted over something else. Whoa. If you look behind the Mona Lisa, you can actually see that she had a much larger head once. Wow. Although maybe it just shrunk with age. And you can see that veil much more easily. Also, if you x-ray even further, you can see her fully formed skeleton. Makes sense. But the art forgers of today are a wily bunch. Forgers can source old canvases from the correct period. They can use error matching pigments. Even the carbon dating can That's be a bit unreliable. Heck, even the x-rays can be bullshitted. As forgers Bullshit. take into account that their work will be x-rayed, as they do a sort of fake painting or sketch first, and then paint the next version on top. So they paint it like the painting was made. All right, kid. I'll give you $20,000 for this. Or a shiny new bottle of Ritalin. Ah, works every time. You can earn 400 million doing this, but 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 that's too much. That's also too much. The painting didn't exist till 50 years ago, and they're paying 400 million. Millions. This section is about Shakespeare. Wow, that would make so much sense for it to be in the theater. Video. It's it's probably, it's probably fucking money laundering or some bullshit. Yo, on the main channel. This. And then the auction house is gonna take 50 percent off the top because I don't know why. Dude showed up. It changed the game. Shakespeare. Here's the thing though. We basically know nothing about him. First, we don't know what he looked like. Okay. There are two best guesses. One is from this- Yeah, yeah people are spending 400 million, millioners, and we don't even know what the guy looks like. Okay. Raving on a first folio. But that wasn't put together until seven years after he was already dead. Okay. One of his peers, Ben Johnson, knew him though and said, yeah, it's pretty close. It's pretty close. So maybe. The second is a bust that was made for his grave. There are a bunch of others, but they weren't commissioned by Shakespeare himself. They weren't done while he was alive, and he didn't exactly stop to pose for them. But these are the ones we most recognize him by. This includes Chandos, which is probably the Chandos. most recognizable. So this could be him, or this could be some completely other dude, or it could be an idealized version. Damn. Now, we also don't know exactly when he was born or when he bro, died. Bro, 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 just like the, the Instagram girls nowadays using all the filters and stuff. Shakespeare was, was getting paintings made of him where he looks better than he did. Or how he died. His birthday is celebrated on the 23rd of April, but there's no record of that. And then he died on the 23rd of April as well. He's like a VTuber. So he died on his birthday? Odd coincidence, but we know that he did marry a lady named Anne Hathaway. Yes, same as Catwoman, but this one was the original. We also don't even really know what? how to spell his name. There are tons of different signatures by him, but they're practically all spelt differently. And let's not even get started on the conspiracies of whether or not he really wrote his plays. Oh, the okay. son of two illiterate parents from a lower... Yeah, yeah, yeah. next thing you did, he's going to say he's not even real, dude. He, he didn't exist. He's, he's a figment of the imagination. He's a stand-in. He's a writer's name. He's Homer. Last neighborhood suddenly becoming the world's greatest... He, there's no pictures of him while he was alive because he didn't live. Playwright? Hmm, bit suspicious. Also, whether he was gay, or worse, whether he was foreign, or what the hell is going on with his foreign? grave? So if you go to the Holy Trinity Church in Stratford, there is his grave. There he lays, but there is an engraving above him. Good Let's friend. be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he who moves my bones. That's crazy. Cursed, you see. You're not allowed to dig him up. So everyone is super spooked out by the curse. So it's a conspiracy. So, it's, so it's, there's nothing there. And they refuse to dig him up. So archaeologists instead have done radar scans. Radar scans. Turns out 
He's a submarine now. His head is missing. He was grave robbed in 1794. So we can't even reconstruct him that way. And they won't open it up for DNA tests. So it's likely that we will never know the truth. The government is hiding something. The point is, Shakespeare stole a theater. Why is his body? He's, he's, what, 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 is, what is he, Jesus? We can't see the body? We can't? He's in the church and he's got some crazy fucking protection blessing barrier shit over his body? So, missing. He was grave robbed in 17. Open it up for DNA tests. So, it's likely that we will never know the truth. The government is hiding something. The point is, Shakespeare stole a theater at one point. Oh, okay, no. quick Shakespeare moment. In 1599, okay. Shakespeare was working as a playwright with his acting troupe called The Lord Chamberlain's Men. Yep. Now, they were leasing out a theater in Shoreditch called The Theater. Oh, Creative sure it wasn't called The Barn? Name. Anyway, they had a disagreement with their landlord, Giles Allen. Giles revoked their lease. Shakespeare and the Chamberlain's men were not very happy about wow. that, but they had no option but to walk away. But a few days later, in the dead of night, they came back. Whoa. Now the group met up just outside the theater, and they had bribed the watchmen to look the other way. Wow. Then, with daggers and tools in hand, they broke into the theater. Holy shit. Now they weren't there to kill Giles, and they weren't there to steal stuff from the theater. No. They were there to rob the theater. They tore down the entire building, piece by piece, and they started carting it away to a warehouse. Huh? From there, they ferried it across the Thames and over to Southwark. With the materials that they stole, they constructed the Globe Theater. And there it stood for the next 14 years until it burnt down. Oh Which, my goodness. It was a performance of Henry VIII, and a prop cannon was involved. Don't worry about that. But then it was rebuilt. But then in 1642, okay. it was shut down again. Wow. But in 1997, a recreation of the Globe Theatre was made once more. And in London, you can visit it today. As wow. long as you can avoid being stabbed. Yep. Yep, that's London. That's that. Yep, yep. That's London. End the part. And now for the best section of all. Come on, people. We're ready to shoot. Where's the pizza box with the <laughs> hole in it? The what? Oh. Never mind, that's my cue. I gotta go. Catch you soon. Don't forget NordVPN. Pog!